the foundation of the game. Um, and we, you know, we fought so hard to keep it going. Uh, so where it is today is, is fan fantastic for the code, and I think it's growing in heaps and bounds. But you know, we still got a long way to go. That's my opinion. Tony, uh, yeah, I agree with Kat. I think the the ten eleven years of the A League has been has been good. It's been not bad at all. But I've been waiting. I've been waiting for ten years to get that marquee. Australian player across across the across the borders, so we get them in plan. I think we've done that now. We've done that with Timmy now, and uh, I think uh, we're fortunate that we've got Ange in charge. He'll be able to handle Tim extremely well, as you saw in the last two games. I'm going to say Timmy what Timmy played about 15 minutes and scored the most important goal, and that's that's Tim for you. But we've needed someone like Tim to come back. Harry came back. Didn't quite cop it, you know. We we try to get players back, but I'm really happy that we've got Tim now. I think he will be invaluable in the promotion of the of the game and of the heartbeat too. When Tim rings up, when Tim rings up Andy and says, "What can I do?" That's all it needs. All it needs is, is his name, and I think he'll open a, a, a million doors for Andy, and I think it will improve everything about the game. I'm looking forward to this season. Well, I can certainly tell you, I was in Brisbane when uh, Tim made his debut off the bench for Melbourne City against the Brisbane Strikers of the FFA Cup, and I reckon he must have put at least a thousand to fifteen hundred on the gate that day. Absolutely. There were so many kids wearing Cahill T-shirts, and that's the trick, isn't it? Because getting publicity for our game has always been difficult because of the other codes in this country. So you do need stars, stars as you were, Cap, back in the day. Oh, man, uh, you know, we were, we were pretty good. <laughs> Let me tell you. You were. But, uh, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You met me. I was pretty good. That's what you meant, Kenny. No, God's sake. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we were pretty good. I mean, but, you know, those days, uh, people didn't, uh, you know, didn't sort of, we, we, weren't, we didn't have the exposure. You know, people didn't talk about uh, our round, the round ball code as much. Um, these days, you know, you've got TV, you know, you've got social media, you you know, whatever you do is, is there. But, uh, you know, we had some decent players back then, and, you know, that's for sure. Yeah, but you, it, it's, it's a two, the social media thing is like a two-edged sword. I mean, so I, can, I can imagine I was, I was listening to George and, and Turvey up on, on the stage and didn't have cameras when we played. You know, you, you know, job the way you tackle Tony, apparently. Uh, well, <laughs> well, apart from apart from that, just some of the things that that happened, like generally when he went overseas or or things like that. You know, nowadays, you know, that's what we have to sort of try and teach these guys. And I'm talk, I'm not talking about soccer. I'm talking soccer is actually pretty good. I think uh, I think they're fully aware of whatever you do in public could easily end up next morning, you know, on your social media, and you could be ruined. And I think we, that's what they've got to teach. Union boys, AFL boys, league boys, and the soccer, they've got to teach them that, unfortunately, you just got to be very careful what you do and what you say. And, uh, you know, it's just what, just part of today's, today's uh, problems. I want to talk to you, uh, Peter, specifically, because I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll have a view on this, and Tony might as well. There's a lot of comparisons made between the old days of the National Soccer League and the new era of the A-League. Which is better, you know, which was more technical, blah, blah, blah. What's your view? You, you played in the old competition, you've watched the new one. I, I think we, uh, we had better individuals uh, back in the NSL days. Um, I, I don't think we're producing the quality of player technically these days. Uh, that's why we're, they're relying on uh, bringing in the imports, you know, the Spanish boys and West Wanderers and, you know, um, Sydney FC bringing more the import players. You know, back then uh, we didn't have, we had, uh, you know, homegrown talent, uh, a lot of, lot, of, lot of players that were coming through. Um, you know, that's why we made the, um, you know, the you know, Olympics under the 23s, we, you know, under 19s, World Cups and whatever. We, we, we're not seeing that now. I think that's why I said before we've got a long way to go. As I think youth development uh, needs to be looked at closely. Um, I think the the, the A League as a as a spectacle is is very good. With, with again with the with the marquees that have come in into the league, but I think youth development needs to um, you know we need to bring uh, bring more more young players technically. And yet, Tony, you look at 
where the Socceroos are at the moment, and you have the likes of Massimo Luongo, who of course didn't play in the A-League, but Tommy Rogic did, Aaron Moy did. They're three players who are very adept technically. Australia does still produce some pretty good talent, doesn't it? We do. I actually, I, I, sort of, I don't like to disagree with Kat, but I, I sort of do. I think technical, the technical ability nowadays, I think is, is, is a lot better. I just think they're a little bit thick. No disrespect, they just, they don't understand the game. The game is not about, about being technical and, and, and not making a couple of players and things like that. It's, it's, it's the whole thing. And they're not really bright at, at defending. Defend, the defenders, and can't agree with me, the defenders are, are not, not that good. I don't think they're good anyway. There's a lot of naive defenders. They probably need well, a bit of your you skill. Bit of your, <laughs> bit of your this is, this is like being in the back of the days of the NSL, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Attack versus defense. Continue. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> no, that, that, that's true. But I think, uh, I, like, I like what I'm seeing in the national team, I've got to admit. I think they're, uh, they're playing some decent football. But you see, that's that's the advantage of having a national team because you can pick your you can pick your players. But to play it from the back, like I've been watching the FFA Cup, and you know sometimes it gets a little bit laboured. You know they you know they they, they keep putting up 65 percent possession, but they've been beaten three 0 And this is this is where we're, where we're sort of going with the game at the moment. And I think we need to sort of encompass the whole thing, not just say all right we'll do Dutch, and then you'll get. Maybe someone else said, "Well, I think that the, you know the, the Brazilians are not bad. All right, we'll do the Brazilian system or the German system. We have to formulate our own system because we've got a diversity of nationalities in our country. You relates to Nestevsky, like yourself, Caddy. Caddy, skilled as, as as you wouldn't believe. I was just talking about him before. There, we played it, that last game. I played it was a grand final at Paramount Stadium, and it wasn't anything anywhere like what they were playing on now." It's a beautiful service. Uh, remember the service, Kev? That, that pitch was rubbish. It was, was diabolical, <laughs> but he was, he was unbelievable because of his skill. Yeah, People like me, it was, it, you know, you find it difficult because we haven't got the same technical ability as this guy has. And the need to get, but I'll be honest with you, like defending wise, you know, we knew how to, to deal with things, but they don't seem to do that now. So you're advocating a, a bit more of a r more rounded approach, a bit more pragmatic. Yes. As well as exactly. teaching. The, the, the exactly. Is that something that you concur with, Cat, or not? Oh, I mean, look, I, I think uh, you know some of the players they need, uh, you know, they need guidance how, how to be become uh, better footballers. You know, um, you know, skill wise, uh, thinking wise, to, to to be on the next level. I don't, I don't, I don't think personally we're we're producing as many um, you know, talented players as what we should. I think they need to be refined. I don't think that the people uh, you know, uh, are refining these uh, these talented players. That's why we, we don't see too many players going overseas and making it overseas these days. Uh, we really need to see the real picture. Back in the day, in the saw days, we had 300 players overseas. How many players we got today? Uh, people don't really understand. We, we don't have uh, we're not producing the talent to, to go and, and make it overseas because they, they're they really not good enough. And really, coaches in this country, uh, they need to refine players. I'm not saying there isn't good players. There is great players, but they need refining and they need good coaches to refine them, such as me and Hendo and uh, a few others. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. That was a job that was, that, uh, that was a job interview. <laughs> yeah. oh. I've got to say, I'm pleased you said that because I was falling at Brigham City. <laughs> Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Well, let me Come ask on. you, is, is one of the reasons perhaps why we're not producing the depth of talent uh, as you claim, because to actually have those coaches employed, even on a part-time basis, of course cost money. The game still is a cottage industry in this country, isn't it? Yeah, I think financially, I... when you consider the riches Absolutely. that we have with the TV deals for AFL and rugby league, Football is still a pauper, isn't it? To a certain extent. Yes. To a certain... No, no, no. Hang on, hang on a second here. Mm. To a certain extent. But we have clubs, like, I'm from out west, I'm from the Southern Districts area. And we have clubs, uh, I'm talking about little small clubs, cat, And they'd have maybe 150, 200,000 sitting in the bank. Because they get their fees for, for, the, for playing and things like that. They need to, what, what we need to do, we need to utilize that money. We need to get a director of coaching for Southern Districts. 
We need to, we need to get him out to each club for a week and, and just talk to the coaches, sort of guide them, tell them what they're because they're just they're just fathers, they're just fathers and, and and sometimes even mothers, you know, just trying to coach the kids, and and that's what the problem is. And we've got a heap of good players floating around, just need a bit of guidance. But the problem with the A League is it's a, it's a results driven driven league. Promotion and relegation would help, Tony. Yeah, well, we spoke about that before. I mean, it's a, you know, it's, you know, the NPL one and things like that. They're having their little playoffs now. Now that should happen every year, but that team that wins that playoff should maybe go into, into the into the national into the national league, into the A League. 